Okay, hi. Again, um, uh, we're back looking at the Street of Phelps model. This is the first part of the model building process. So um, I'm going to refer you to those terms of reference that we've got. Um, and I'm going to scroll down. We're going to just look at those basic model assumptions first. And uh, going to model assumptions, what you see is all of these basic model assumptions in the sense that flow will be steady state and the stream profile that we have will be uniform for the modeling area of modeling the length of the modeling area so that's a real simplifying assumption uh, because you don't have the ripple or pool effect um, what we will vary is the BOD and the DO, and we'll use a time step of 0.1 days. That's kind of an arbitrary thing, but it kind of refines the model a little bit rather than having uh, single day time steps, which makes it a little bit uh, uh, more of a blunt instrument. Uh, we'll use a sediment oxygen demand of municipal, uh, use municipal sludge that you'll find in your. Um, uh, in your notebooks, at, at least in that PowerPoint slide, you'll have a look. Uh, you have some options, but th they'll give you some basics there. Um, and what, what, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start the mixing, uh, start the model at the mixing point. And that's part of this first, um, uh, this first video. Um, and, and we'll We'll be looking at uh, some of these things in, in assumption six, and so these aren't really so much assumptions, but the, the, um, some of the instructions. You'll also find uh, what we'll do is we'll leave this whole idea of sediment oxygen demand and um, input of non-point source UOD or ultimate oxygen demand. Uh, in the background until we're uh, uh, until we've developed the basic street of Phelps model, the TMDL margin of safety or MOS of ten percent is something that we'll put in there. And and basically in in regulatory terms, you're saying you can't really model precisely down to your DO minimum criterion. And I'm assuming you understand that our minimum criterion would be for 24 hour average rather than that instantaneous value. Okay, so use that DO minimum, uh, that 10% margin of safety um, uh, parameter here as you see fit, and, and we can go from there. All right, on the next page, um, what I've done is shown you there are some general inputs that we're going to look at uh, in terms of the general model inputs, uh, the physical and chemical properties at the mixing point um, and then some of our basic rate coefficients. Now for any kind of model when you start out it's like um, looking at an elephant and just not knowing how to eat the elephant. So I suggest what we do is we cut up the elephant into small enough bite-sized chunks and attack it that way. Um, so let's go to our Excel spreadsheet You've got enough activity or information here to begin a spreadsheet, and this is the DO, uh, the dissolved oxygen sag curve uh, in our first phase, and this is what we have over here. I'm going to see. It. Okay, so um, we have basic the gen basically the general model model inputs, uh, temperature, salinity. Uh, the height and the width of the stream, uh, and then our time step. And we're doing our time step delta T in terms of days. We've got the river discharge in terms of uh, cubic foot per second, and then our UOD, which is basically BOD times 1.5, BOD5 times 1.5. And that's basically the theoretical amount of absolute oxygen demand that's in the water. So you'll see that's about four. Our dissolved oxygen over here at that point is going to be about six milligram per liter. Um, the wastewater treatment uh, discharge will be usually in millions of gallons per day of MGD. And so cubic foot per second versus MGD, obviously we're going to have to um, 
we're going to have to uh, uh, match these up in the correct units, right? Uh, our UOD from the wastewater treatment plant will set an initial one of, uh, actually, um, we're going to set an initial one of 50, but uh, if you go back to your Word document, I actually suggested your starting one would be 40. What I'm just doing here is kind of getting some basic numbers going on in round figures so that it's a little bit easier to calculate. Um, estimated non-point source and then our, our rate coefficients. So all of the numbers in yellow are numbers that we can input and change. For instance, if I change this one uh, and make that 1100, you'll see down uh, at the flow that that's changed. So I'll watch that. I'm going to change it back to 1000. See down at the derived physical properties, those numbers change. So we've got the basic inputs in yellow. I decided to keep my reaeration coefficient, Kd, um, in here. While it's not a physical input, it is an input that depends both on the uh, height of the stream and the width of the stream. So you've got those, uh, sorry, not a height and, sorry, the velocity of the stream. Uh, so you can see those two calculations are there. So I decided to leave my reaeration coefficient based again on the, um, uh, let me go back, my, my brain's just frozen. <laughs> Uh, actually, and I need to change this as well. Um, Temperature coefficient will be based on the O'Connor Dobbins method. So um, you can use your initial KR at 0.37 or something like that, but it will be based on the O'Connor Dob Dobbins method. Okay. Um, once you've got those basic inputs in over here, uh, what you want to do, uh, let me just check this. Okay. What you want to do is then start looking at some of your mass flow around uh, the mixing point. So first of all, you want to convert your flow in your wastewater treatment plant numbers to the same thing. So I've converted them to meters cubed per second. I've converted these to meters cubed per day. And so all you can see over here is we've I've just used basic conversion factors there. Okay, and you can see that each, each place look in the formula line over here what I've done. Um, and so you can look these up and set them up as you want rather than as I want. We want the height of the river rather than a foot to be in meters and then the width of the river as well. Uh, we want our DO sat. Now if you have a look at your DO sat, uh, you're going to be able to go back to that formula in the notes that I gave you way back when and convert the DO sat. Uh, look at both our salinity, which we've set at zero, and um, our temperature. That'll give you your saturated DO for any given temperature. Um, your river velocity really is just going to be a calculation of what your flow is uh, over the actual cross-section area, cross-sectional area of your stream profile. So that's not, uh, that's not all that difficult either, but you want that velocity in terms of, um, because you're going to use it in, in terms of the O'Connor Dob Dobbins equation, but it comes up here and there. But you can also see um, your velocity in terms of meters, of meters per day and meters in the, in the time step itself. And because we're working within a particular time step, this, uh, let's go back up here, your time step is a variable. So you can make that time step 0.5 days, for instance, um, rather than 0.1. Or if you want it to be more precise, you could take it down, you know, to 0.01 or something like that. 
but uh, usually a time step of 0.1 uh, per day is uh, is about as good as um, actually yeah is about as good as we we would want to have it and I just saw a mistake here that should be per day and I will should actually just carry on but I'll, I'll take care of that later on um, so that's our time step um, now we have to convert some other things our uh, decay coefficient and then also our um, uh, our reaeration coefficient over here what you can see is I have used that uh, theta we put the temperature activity coefficient for theta you'll see that in the PowerPoint slide so we're just adjusting that coefficient for temperature. So watch as I change temperature how my reaeration and decay coefficients go up. So if I take my temperature up to 35, reaeration and decay coefficients are going to increase uh, basically. And then I have to convert, convert those basically to my delta T time step. Um, our special calculations for SOD and non-point source inputs we're just going to use these as um, uh, basic additions in terms of um, uh, a concentration uh, added over a particular time step. Now, that's a little bit of a workaround. We should be a little bit more careful with, with that. But again, this is a very simplified model assumption. So in our SOD, we're looking at grams per square meter per time step, and that's derived from our input, where our input SOD is going to be 1.5. So uh, it's going to be 1.50. Then we're looking at our area times velocity. So cross-sectional area times velocity per second, and then we're looking at it per day and then looking at area times velocity times our delta t times step to get that uh, going. And from that then we can calculate our SOD in terms of grams of input per delta time step. And then finally, because we know our cubic meters per second or cubic meters flow per delta time step, we can then uh, convert that uh, um, into a particular value and that value then is what we uh, what we will use for the SOD calculation that'll come a, a little bit later our non-point source input we kind of do it the same way we're taking it grams per cubic meter per time step that should be delta T not T um, and uh, the same sort of calculation goes on here, where I have taken my input at 105 and then divided that by my wastewater treatment flow in terms of cubic meters per day. So the, the outcome is going to be grams per meters squared uh, for a particular time. And we're going we're gonna to throw that in there as well. Okay, so... Um, Hopefully that gets us started, that gets us uh, on our way, uh, at least in the, first, in the first show. Thank you very much.